leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arm. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting. One more time. Yes, I'm leaning. Leaning, safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. Listen, we certainly thank you. For tuning in, sharing with us uh, in our weekly Bible study session. Uh, do forgive us, we are off to a little bit of a late start. I'm going to do my best to kind of get us uh, going where we need to go real quickly. Uh, but we were experiencing just a few technical difficulties uh, while we were attempting to get started. But we are here. Uh, and we are live, and we certainly thank you for tuning in, sharing with us. Real quickly, Psalm number 40. Uh, Psalm number 40. Uh, we want to uh, get started in our reading psalm number 40 uh, for those who have your word and are sharing with us uh, psalm number 40 uh, my, my intention is to just get to the first uh, three or four verses of this text uh, if the lord says so uh, psalm number 40 uh, the first couple of verses verse number one uh, says it this way i waited patiently for the lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set me up on a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Uh, I want to I just kind of deal with these first couple of verses. Uh, as we as we uh, figure this thing out again, it's a good thing to wait. We talked about this uh, before, uh, patience with the purpose, uh, and we want to kind of talk about the blessings in waiting. Uh, let's pray, and we'll jump into uh, Scripture. God, our Father, again, we thank you uh, for, for allowing us this blessed privilege of allowing us to come into your house one more time. We thank you, uh, God, for life, health, and strength. We thank you for keeping us throughout the course of this day. We ask now, God, as we prepare to uh, do what you have called and commissioned us to do, that you would continue to empower us and endow us uh, with your spirit, uh, with your love, with your ability to share with these, your people. Do now, God, as only you can, and we'll be grateful for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, one more time, we want to look at Psalm number 40. And uh, we are uh, peeking in at these uh, first uh, three verses and uh, we'll see what the Lord says uh, after which. Uh, but we want to kind of look at this. Uh, at Psalm 40, if it sounds familiar, um, it, it's because it's from a familiar writer. And you all know uh, I have a special love uh, for David uh, because David... Uh, to me is is the one character in the Bible that captures uh, I, I, who it is or what it is and in an essence uh, to be a child of God. And, and so uh, David, more than anybody else, uh, if you really pay attention to his life uh, and the way that he lived, David uh, captures us in a nutshell. David shows us uh, that you can love God and still have some issues. Uh, he shows us that you can love God and still go through some things. Uh, but most of all, David shows us if we stay committed to God, then God will indeed uh, show up on time on our behalf. And so, beloved, if we look at this, we find David 
uh, seemingly captured uh, in, in again uh, in, in a period where he's waiting on God to do something uh, for him. And, and beloved, if you, if you really think about this, uh, we, we talk about those things that we want and we desire. Uh, we, we talk about those things uh, that we are looking for and searching for. Uh, but, but ultimately, if you, if you really think about it, if you really pay attention, most times when you talk to people about what's going on in their Christian walk, nine times out of ten, they always say stuff like, I'm waiting on God to do this. I'm waiting on God to open a door. I'm waiting on God to make a way. I've been striving to get here. I've been working to get there and I'm just waiting on the Lord to make it happen for me. Well, the thing that I love about David is David lets us know uh, if by chance we're waiting on God, that there is a way that we must wait on God. D David says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Listen, it's an old song that uh, was sang in the church when I was a little boy uh, uh, at the New St. Luke Baptist Church, New St. John, and even uh, New Ebenezer. Uh, they, they used to say stuff like, you can't hurry God. Uh, you might as well wait on him. Uh, you, you, most of us find ourselves in the situations that we're in because we attempt to dictate to God. We attempt to push God and force God and even rush God to do for us what we've asking him to do. Now, listen, uh, uh, I, I was never able uh, to make my parents do anything for me before they were ready to or before they felt like I needed them to. And and, and beloved, if, if you really pay attention to this thing as a parent now myself, uh, when it comes to the things that my child asks me for or, or is trying to obtain, uh, it, it's, a, it's a thing that we have to pay attention to uh, if they're ready for, if by chance they're in a position to handle what it is that they're asking for and and love uh, i want you to, to think about this uh, have you ever thought that god uh, is trying to make sure that before he grants you what it is you're begging him for that you are able to handle the blessings or are able to handle uh, the prosperity able to handle the promotion that you have been petitioning him for if you really think about it beloved we struggle in the position that we are in and we keep daring God, if you will, to give us more when we're mismanaging what he's already given us. And so David allows us to see that if we're waiting on God, there is a way that you have to do it. David said, I patiently waited. Listen, I need you to catch this because uh, pa patience means uh, that you recognize it's coming uh, and, and you're still working while you are waiting. You, you, you can't be patient and be pushy at the same time. If, if you're going to be patient, that means that while you're waiting on God to give you the promotion, you're still doing the job that he gave you already. You, you don't quit what you have trying Trying to get what you want without already having it that that that's irresponsibility you you don't walk out of one job without securing the next job y'all ain't gonna talk to me you you not gonna get out your car on the side of 75 and walk to the nearest dealership and just believe that they gonna give you another one that's not how this works. M most times when you go to the dealership you are trading in what you already have in preparation Preparation of receiving something new. You do know only a fool would let go before God has given something more. What I love about God is, beloved, when, when he gives, watch this, when he gives something new or something more, he also shows you what to do with what you have. Y'all think I'm kidding. Well, listen, I, I just mentioned it to you. You don't walk away from the car, but you, you may attempt to sell the car or get to the dealership to trade the car. You, you don't just walk away from it. You, you make sure a family member or a friend is not in need 
need of transportation without just walking away from it. God, God is going to make sure before he give you something more, what you have is already handled. Can we just be honest? It's a reason why we can't get the relationship that we desire because we have not handled correctly the one that we're in. Y'all ain't going to talk to me now because there are too many of us that are hopping from one to another trying to open a new door and a new book without closing the book that we're currently in you do know that God does it all decent and in order and before he gives you more you gotta handle what you currently have D David says I waited patiently for the Lord watch it and because I waited patiently for him the Bible says he then inclined unto me what what are you saying preacher because I waited on him then he began to listen to me because because I was patient because I was patient waiting on him because because I was not negligent or irresponsible but because I was patiently waiting in my pursuit of promotion God inclined himself to me the word uh, inclined li literally means that God turned his attention to that that's what it means when one, one, one theologian writes it this way uh, when God inclines that literally means that he allows himself to kneel down and lends his ear unto you can 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 you just think about it for a moment when 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 you are properly patient the Lord then will incline himself he will turn his attention to he will then give you his ear the Bible says not only does he give me his attention but but he then hears my cry. Uh, you do, you do know, beloved, uh, that 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 when God recognizes your patience, not just your persistence, but your patience, He then will hear what you have to say. Says uh, He heard my cry. Uh, watch this. Uh, I, I I see why that 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 song is so was so powerful. Now I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied my every groan. Long as I live, why trouble rise? I'll hasten unto his throne I, I i see the power in it now uh because because it lets us know that that god just ain't sitting there allowing our petitions and prayers and cries pass us by but he loves us enough to hear our cry and respond to our request the bible says he heard my cry Watch it. Verse two says, and he brought me out of a, a horrible pit. Uh, you, you, you do know. And, and let's just be honest. Uh, not every pit that we're in, we can get ourselves out of. Not now. I, I know we're smart and we're strong and, and we're gifted, and, and and God has put more into us than we realize and recognize. But can I tell you, some stuff we don't get out of, God gets us out of. Okay, okay, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Y'all, y'all, y'all must think I'm making this up. Uh, but, but according to Scripture, the Bible says uh, that that when the when when the disciples were on the boat. Watch it. It says that the Lord didn't pull them out of the storm. He just made himself known in the storm. He, 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 didn't, pay, he didn't take the boat and lift it out of the water, transport it to the store. The, the Bible says he stands on the edge of the boat and looks out into the winds and the waves and says, peace, be still. Okay, that one didn't shout you. Listen, the, the story says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. The, the Bible, I, I'm not making this up the bible says in daniel 3 it says that they said the lord gonna handle it regardless of what nebuchadnezzar says the lord never pulls them out of the fire he shows up in Lord, I'm talking better than y'all talking to me. He he shows up in the fire. Watch this, beloved. You do know that some of the greatest blessings is not being brought out of. Some of the greatest blessings is God getting into you. You still missing me. You do know that sometime when God put us out of, he pull us out and we get ungrateful. We get arrogant because we tend to believe that we had something to do with our deliverance. But beloved of God, you know that there's no greater shout than the one that when you recognize if it had not been for the Lord. 
Psalm, Psalm 125, make it make sense. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, the songwriter said, where would I be? I wish somebody would catch this. My shout is real big when I recognize I didn't do it. Don't get me wrong. I worship him when I realize I got enough strength. I praise him when I recognize that he's allowed me to get out of it. But watch it. I surely shout when I recognize it's all him and none of me. I, I sure enough shout when I recognize I couldn't not do it by myself but if it had not been for the Lord on my side listen listen David says he brought me out of a horrible pit beloved of God you do know that pits are a part of progress Lord have mercy too too many people think that that you just gonna go from one mountaintop experience to another that every day on your street is easy street that is gonna always be sunshine it ain't gonna never be no rain but beloved can I tell you you learn how good God is when you experience him in a pit you 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 can truly worship God when you encounter him in a valley you you know how good God is when you've been so far down that that you can't tell which way is up but then God reaches his hand down and pulls you out that David say David say he pulled me out of a horrible pit watch it beloved he says and out of the miry clay uh, the, the, the miry clay uh, it, 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 it was used uh, uh, to formulate into what we would consider a cement like a uh, compound of a mixture that would harden and be hard enough for us to get a grip on and or stand on and or walk on so if we were in something we would be able to step on this and pull ourselves and climb ourselves out but the miry clay is an indication that it is a soft substance that they cannot handle your weight it cannot support your force so if you try to pull on it or stand on it you ain't gonna do nothing but keep falling back down lord help your boy preach it he, he says he pulls me out of the miry clay lord that mean when i'm in what we would consider quicksand and and i'm constantly going down constantly going back i'm constantly struggling to get out of the lord makes a way hmm. pulls me out of the pit out of the clay watch this and then he sets my feet upon a rock uh, this beloved is powerful because uh, uh, because we were just struggling in a pit uh, in the clay but but the Lord has a way of pulling us out of what seems to be impossible to stand on and then stands my feet upon the rock that that means that he brought me out of the soft mushy stuff and put me on something that I can stand on. He has allowed my feet to meet a strong foundation that will allow me to get out of what I was in. I'm done. I'm done. Watch it. It says, not only has he set my feet up on a rock, watch this, but he turns around and establishes my steps. Hmm. This beloved is good because uh, some folk, when God pull them out, they immediately try to get back on the path that they were in. They, they immediately try to continue going the way that they were going. But David says, I, I've learned since I was waiting that when he pulled me out, the least I can do is allow him to set my course and stay the course. This, beloved, is something to shout about because you have to know what the Bible tells us uh, that, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And, and, and because he's the one that's able to order our steps, we ought to be wise enough to allow him to do it. Lord, he says, he says, he pulled me out. He set me upon and he ordered my steps. I got to go. I'm done with y'all tonight. But watch what he says. D David says that, that he has made sure that I'm not in what I was in. I I'm not going the way that I was going. 
and I got a new course of direction. <laughs> I, I, I hear the songwriter saying, order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father. I pray order. My Lord, I want to preach it. I really, I really want to preach it, but we're in Bible class. But, but can I tell you, uh, you ought to ask the Lord to order your steps. You, you, you ought to tell him, Lord, I trust you. That, that's essentially what's happening. When you allow him to order your steps, you are putting your trust in him. And you are believing that he's going to hand it. I got to go. Verse 3 says, not only uh, has he pulled me out, not only has he put my foot on solid foundation, not only has he given me a new direction. Watch this verse. Verse 3 says, and he has given me a new song. <laughs> he says, he says, and he has put a new song in my mouth. Can I tell you, one of the things that we're struggling about is uh, we, we keep getting new blessings and we keep singing old song. Lord have mercy. I'm done. I'm done. Too, too many folk, too many folks struggling. Not watch this. It's, it, 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 it's not that the old song ain't got no power. But, but if God is doing new things in your life, don't you think you ought to sing a new song? Don't, don't you think you ought to say something new unto God? God, God, God tired of just listening to you say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Don't get me wrong. Thank you, Lord. It's powerful. But hallelujah sound good. <laughs> he, he says he has put a new song in my mouth. Watch what he says. Praise to our God. This is the words of his song. This, this is his song. He, he says he says he gave me a new song. What's the song, Mills? Praise to our God. Many, many will see uh, uh, and fear in many, and and will then trust in the Lord. Oh, I got it now. That's like that old song where you sing. I will trust. In the Lord, I I will trust in the Lord. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna treat everybody right. You you do know that when the Lord pull you out, oh Lord, you you ought to sing a new song. Yeah, I don't really know what your song is, but but when the Lord pull you out, you, you have a you ought to have a song on your lips. When God when God makes a way from you, you you ought to have a new song in your spirit. When when the Lord make a way for you, you ought to have some worship to give unto him. When when the Lord make a way, you ought to be telling him, Thank you, Lord, uh, for making a way. When he opened the door, thank you, God, uh, for opening the door. When you bring you out, thank you. Thank you, high Lord. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me out. By the Bible say, praise to the Lord. Mm, yeah, many will see it and will fear. Yeah, this ain't fear of being afraid, but this is a fear of admiration. Yeah, he said many will see what God, yeah, oh Lord, yeah, has done for me. Yeah, and because yeah, they see what God did for me, yeah, they then yeah, will begin yeah, to trust in God themselves. Well, I didn't mean to go this far, but, but can I tell you yeah, that some Somebody yeah, is looking at your praise. Yeah. Somebody yeah, is waiting on your shout. Yeah. Somebody yeah, is looking forward to your testimony. Yeah. Because good praise yeah, will make more praise. Yeah. Good worship yeah, will make more worship. Yeah. Stop holding back yeah, and tell your story. Yeah. If it had not been yeah, for the Lord yeah, on your side yeah, where would you be yeah, that songwriter said he kept my yeah, enemies away yeah, he let the sun yeah, shine through a cloudy day yeah, he rocked me yeah, in the cradle of his arm yeah, because he knew yeah, I had been battered by the storm yeah, shout yourself right there yeah, and say if it had not been yeah, oh Lord, yeah, for the Lord, yeah, making a way for me, yeah, if it had not been, yeah, for the Lord, yeah, healing my body, yeah, if it had not been, yeah, oh Lord, yeah, for the Lord, yeah, opening a door for you, yeah, tell 
yourself. I still be messed up. I still be in a jam. I still be outdoors. But thank you, God, for making a way for me. Thank you for opening my door. And I pray that my testimony, it encourages somebody else. David says that many will see it and begin to fear. Whew, I sure didn't mean to go this far. That David says they going to see what he did for me. And they going to be so happy. Watch this. That the Lord bless me. That they're going to begin to trust him to do the same thing for them. Can I tell you something, beloved? You ought to start telling somebody how good God has been to you. Uh, so that somebody else can see it, can hear it, and be blessed. Watch this. David says, and then we'll trust in the Lord. Can I tell you, uh, there is no real relationship without trust we're gonna get into it next week when we start diving into verse one five but can i tell you there is no real relationship if there is no trust david says watch this they see it they believe it and then they trust watch this in the lord this is a preacher moment stop trying to get folk to think you so holy Think you so powerful. Think you so righteous. Tell the truth. It really ain't about you. It's about what God did to you and through you and with you that got you where you are. That David says, many will see it and trust in the Lord. Can I tell you, my testimony is strong because I know where I've been. I know what I've been through. I know what I've gone through. I know what I've suffered through. I know what I've dealt with. But can I tell you, the greatest part of the testimony, <clears throat> despite all of that, is still he died for me. Yeah, he brought me out. Yes, he made a way. Yes, he delivered me. Yes, he pulled me out. Yes, he turned me around. But, but my greatest part of the testimony is he died for me. And he didn't stay dead, but he got up on the third day morning with all power in his hands. That, beloved, is the testimony. That is the power of in which we live and breathe that beloved is what we stand on and so can i tell you uh we, we ought to know uh, who god is and how good god is uh, and be able to tell somebody watch this because that david hadn't been delivered yet but he was already worshiping where he was and, and can i tell you this is my, my encouragement for the night uh, you, you don't have to be brought out to believe that you're going to be brought out. You, 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 don't, you don't have to be delivered to, to shout like you delivered. Can I say it like we used to say when I was kids? Uh, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. You have to believe it. Let, let me just say it this way. Uh, when you shout when it's all over, that means you're shouting on the blessing that you have received. Whether it's deliverance, whether it's healing, whether it's a, way, a, a way made, you're shouting on what has happened. When you shout before it happens, Happens, that means you're shouting and you're believing in he who's going to provide the blessing. Too many folk get caught up on the blessing and don't pay no attention to the blesser. And can I tell you, it's always more power in the blesser than it is in the blessing. Because a blessing can run out. Uh, it might be a small space. It might be a limited time. But the blesser, God in heaven, Jesus, his son, uh, is unlimited, infinite, if you will, in their power and their ability. Matter of fact, Psalm 90, uh, round verse 2, latter part of that verse says, For everlasting to everlasting thou art God. That literally means that he was here before you got here and he ain't going nowhere. He'll be here when we leave. And so we have to put our faith, put our hope, put our trust in the God of our salvation. Well, beloved, I, di I didn't mean to go that far, but I... I sure hope we would have spent more time together. Forgive me, we'll pick it back up next week. Uh, but I sure hope you were blessed by this word, by this time that we have shared together. Uh, uh, and, and letting you know that, that there is some blessings in waiting. When you wait uh, patiently, the Lord will hear you. The, the Lord will bring you up. The Lord will make a way for you. He will set you up. 
and he will order your steps. Mostly, he then will put a song uh, in your mouth. And so, beloved, we're done for the night. We certainly hope uh, that you'll come back and share with us. As a matter of fact, we'll be here Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Same time, same place, same channel. We'll be right here back next Tuesday. Uh, same time, same place. We'll be able to share with you again the word of the Lord. I'm praying that you were blessed. I'm praying that you were helped. I'm praying that you were encouraged and that you surely will cling closer to Christ. And so I'm, I'm signing off in prayer. Uh, but I want to remind you that God is still here. He's still on the throne. He's still able, capable of doing exactly what he said. Uh, we, we certainly hope that you'll come back and share with us on Sunday and even again on Tuesday. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time you've allowed us to assemble and share together. We thank you for this word. This went forth that these are your people. We certainly ask God that somebody has helped, that somebody is encouraged, uh, that someone has pushed closer to you. We ask God that you would manifest yourself in their lives, remind them that, that you're only as far away as a prayer and you're able and willing to answer their prayers. God, we ask now you continue to be in the midst of us. Uh, keep us, God. Hold us. Cover us. Lead us and guide us as only you can. Protect us, oh God, as only you can. The devil is busy. God, the enemy is active. Uh, and so, God, we need you to, to stay on our back, on our side, on our trail and leading us uh, where we desire to go. And you would have for us to go. Bless now this church family. Bless now leadership. Bless now those who are sick and afflicted in the hospitals, uh, nursing home, convalescing home, can't come out of home. Uh, we ask, oh God, that you would be so good to us, that you would give us an appointed time and place uh, that we shall come together and share again. These and other things we ask in the precious and powerful name of a risen Christ Jesus. And for his sake, we say amen and bless God. Until next time, be blessed.